Hello everyone and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. So this is the video on introduction to Bunsen burner, wire loop, petroplate and pipettes. Okay. So this is specifically the video is for first year students who are new to microbiology and you deal with Bunsen burner, wire loop, petroplate and pipettes during your practical. So you should know why and how to use these. Okay. So just an introduction to all these um, basic tools and equipments. So this is the video for you all do watch it till the end and get your concepts clear. Okay, so let's start So Bunsen burner the Bunsen burner is also known as fish tail burner. Okay, or fish tail Bunsen burner and it is used in our microbiology laboratory while performing aseptic techniques. Now, what is aseptic technique? So aseptic technique is uh, you perform the um, transfer of the culture or inoculation in the uh, good controlled environment where you try to avoid the contamination. Okay, so to control to have a controlled environment, we use Bunsen burner. Okay, so the air around the Bunsen burner is hot. So what happens? The particles will not uh, settle on your plate while you are uh, say drawing a uh, streak plate technique. Okay, so that is how we use Bunsen burner and that is the reason we use Bunsen burner. Okay, so around Bunsen burner a 0.5 meter of uh, radius the area uh, around the burner should be 0.5 meter where you should work. Okay, not away from Bunsen burner. Okay, so the zone that is created the hot air zone that is created by the Bunsen burner the flame is actually the area that is uh, good for our working. Okay, for the aseptic techniques. Okay, now the aseptic technique is basically you try to avoid contamination by using some um, techniques like uh, flame sterilization of your loop using Bunsen burner. Okay, so these are the some basic aseptic techniques. You will learn these uh, when you start with your practicals. Okay, now about the Bunsen burner. The role. The role is to ensure that the work area remains aseptic. Aseptic means um, no contamination during the work period and used. It is also used to flame sterilize the wire loop and glass spreaders when required. Now we flame sterilize glass spreaders when we do spread plate technique. Okay, so at that time and while doing the streaking, we use wire loop. Okay, or streaking or for inoculation purpose also. So these are the um, techniques that means the streak plate and spread plate where we required Bunsen burner for flame sterilization. Okay, so that is the rule. The proper flame is actually the blue small blue cone. Okay, the this one and not the large plume or it should not be even orange. Okay, a very large plume. That means a very long flame coming out and it is completely orange. Okay, that is not the correct uh, flame of the Bunsen burner. You should get a small blue cone. Okay, I will show you. Okay, so this is the actual flame that you should see. You should see an inner flame that should be blue and the outer one can be uh, say blue to red to orange. Okay, that depends. Now this is about the structure of the Bunsen burner. So you can see here this is the rubber tubing okay, from which the gas flows inside the burner. This is the air hole. Now the air hole should be open so that here you get a proper flame. Okay, This is the barrel or the chimney through which the gas passes further through the wire gauze. Here is a small mesh like um, uh, yeah, gauze from which the gases, gas passes out and when you ignite it, you get a flame. Okay. Now the color of the outer flame depends on how much your gas is getting oxidized when it comes into the contact with the air. Okay. Then this is the gas valve to control the flow and this is the base. Okay. This is the uh, structure or you can say the diagram of Bunsen burner and now we will move towards the wire loop. Now first we have or I have introduced you to the Bunsen burner now about the wire loop because wire loop when you are working with wire loop you required Bunsen burner to flame sterilize it. Okay, otherwise you cannot just pick up a wire loop and start using it. Okay, now it is a basic tool in microbiology. 
a wire loop or inoculating needle okay so when you have a small round like structure on the tip of your loop then it is known as wire loop and when you don't have a circular part here it is just known as a inoculating needle okay so wire loop or inoculating needle is used in several operations in microbiology mostly for inoculation um, you know, inoculating needle is used where you need to just tap that means just need to insert the needle in the um, gar slant and wire loop is generally for streaking okay now uses for streaking for isolation of microorganism then picking up a colony from agar plate inoculating for preparation of cell suspension these are the basics i have just listed basics because you are in first year and this is what you will be learning okay so these are the uses of wire loop then parts now about the wire loop so the first part is the wire holder okay so it is made up of steel okay this one and ebonite or heat resistant plastic handle okay and the other end of the holder is an arrangement to fit the fit and hold the wire okay so this is our main wire so this is the other end that has an arrangement so that it can fit and hold a wire properly the arrangement is constructed such that the wire can be removed and replaced necessary so this is uh, the sleeve which you can um, the way you open your pen to uh, insert a new refill and take out so that's the way even the sleeves of the wire loop they work so you can um, use these sleeves to fit in a wire and even to remove it okay then inoculating wire okay so this is the second part so it is it can be a loop or a straight needle okay the wire is approximately 4 to 5 cm in length and it is made up of platinum nichrome or any metal alloy which can tolerate frequent heating and cooling yeah so now before starting say strict plate we need to flame sterilize or flame incinerate our wire loop now once you heat it it gets red hot you cannot use that red hot loop directly for picking up, picking up the colony because the heat from the loop can kill the bacteria from your colony. When you touch the loop to your colony, the bacteria, they can die due to the heat. So it needs to cool down. Now you cannot wait for hours to cool down your loop. So it is made up of such a metal alloy that it can tolerate frequent heating and cooling. It will heat quickly and it will cool quickly so that your time is saved and you can perform your practicals or your experiment uh, in a perfect way now the wire it should be flexible enough to bend on contact with soft materials like agar and gels and it should be rigid enough to penetrate the gel if pressure is applied okay so it should not be that heavy and um, it should be flexible enough that you can easily just you have to touch the agar surface while you are streaking you don't have to penetrate it you don't have to dig in the agar okay so that's the reason why your um, wire loop should be thin flexible okay and it should be that much rigid enough that when you try to just stab in uh, stab inoculate the agar slant it should penetrate your agar okay when the pressure is applied that so now about pipettes or pipettes so in microbiology lab we generally use four types of pipettes so pipettes that is glass which is of two types that is more and serological i will be discussing the difference of the, both of those and then partial pipettes and micro pipettes okay so for most of the work in your first year you will be dealing with the glass pipettes even in your uh, 11th and 12th standard chemistry practicals you must have dealt with glass pipettes but even in your first year microbiology you are first given glass pipettes to handle so me we generally use uh, volumes of 10 ml 1 ml and 0.1 ml in microbiology practicals okay so a point to mention here is use these uh, pipette pumps okay plastic they are made up of plastic and uh, they are easy to handle okay and if not available then you can go for glass uh, sorry yeah rubber bulbs okay for glass pipettes but don't do mouth pipetting okay it is very dangerous right so you can use these uh, different uh, pumps which are available 
for glass pipettes okay so this uh, uh, this this one is the first type of the pipette then to identify these pipettes uh, means the different volumes okay you have 10 ml pipette you have uh, 5 ml pipette you have 1 ml pipette okay so to identify these different pipettes these volumes they are coded differently with a small colored patch okay you can see on the top of uh, towards the top of your pipette there are some colored patches where everything is uh, written the how much uh, volume the pipette is the pipette can hold is also given that means the volume of the pipette is uh, written then the temperature that is generally it is 27 degree celsius at which the volume that is printed is applicable okay that is everything is um, given above the zero marking okay so zero marking is towards the top of your pipette and towards the end there can be 9 or 10 ml marking okay now that's the difference between the more and serological pipettes okay the colors which are used for uh, marking is actually heat and chemical resistant okay and generally you will find that white and brown is used and even sometimes blue color is also used okay so also the handling volume and the temperature at which the volume is applicable is also printed above the zero marking now about the mohs pipette so it has final volume of 10 ml and 10 ml is actually marked on your pipette towards the tip of your lower tip of your pipette and in case of serological or blow out pipette it is also known as blow out pipette because the volume of the pipette is 10 ml but the lower marking is 9 ml okay that means you have to fill it uh, till your uh, tip of your pipette and you have to blow out everything to get 10 ml complete 10 ml okay so which indicates that the volume of the remaining one portion of 1 ml is to complete the 10 ml volume okay that's the reason the 10 ml marking is missing and it is considered toward uh, till the tip of your pipette so it is important that the tip of your pipette should not be broken so that you get the exact volume that is 10 ml okay so you can see here this is the mohs pipette which has 10 ml marking but in case of serological pipette the 10 ml marking is missing as this is the remaining 1 ml that is considered as complete 10 ml okay so you have to blow out everything from 0 to tip of your uh, serological pipette to get 10 ml of the volume right so this is about the difference between more and serological pipette now about the pascha pipette so pascha pipette is a non graduated glass tubing that means it does not have any kind of markings on it and the one end has been uh, tapered to a capillary by heating and drawing that means the one end is very thin this is the capillary okay very thin it is the glass is drawn by heating and uh, it is having very small uh, radius okay so it is generally used to handle small and unmeasured aliquots of liquid since the end of the pipette is tapered into a long and fine capillary withdrawing liquids from thin tubes and small volume becomes easier okay so this is actually used when you don't have to measure the volume of your liquid sample okay a small aliquot aliquot is a small part okay so at that time you use pascha pipette so this is the rubber bulb glass tubing this is the capillary okay now about the micro pipettes so micro means volumes that we measure is in micro liters okay till now in case of glass pipettes we have seen serological and mohs pipette where we use volumes in ml okay 1 ml 2 ml 3 ml okay so milliliters now we are dealing here with micro liters now it is used in experiments involving small volumes as in fine biochemical or micro uh, molecular biology experiments you require micro pipettes the pipette is manufactured as a plastic body the main pipette with a adjustable plunger which needs to be calibrated now it is very delicate instrument and it needs to be handled with care now this type of pipette they cannot be sterilized by autoclaving or heat drying as they are completely made up of plastic material and um, 
the the body of the pipette is uh, complex so the heat uh, the steam cannot pass in, inside and uh, actually it can damage your pipette when you try to sterilize it so it is not sterilized by autoclaving or dry heating the only part that you can sterilize that is surface sterilize is the tip of your micro pipette just by swabbing impregnated uh, just by swabbing and you can use the swabs which are impregnated with chemicals disinfectants like ethanol okay so that's the way you just have to uh, sterilize surface sterilize the tip of your micro pipette now towards the tip of your micro pipette the tip of pipette or the pipette is designed to hold the micro tips okay of for different volumes now what is that that we will see in the next slide and these micro tips they are sterilized by autoclaving and then they are used okay so these are the tips so this is the main body of your uh, micro pipette that is made up of plastic and this is the tip cone or this is the part that you can surface sterilize by using ethanol you can just uh, take uh, ethanol on uh, tissue paper and you can just surface sterilize it okay then you can fit the tip on this tip cone and you can work with uh, the push buttons you can you have to push the air will be blown out and when you release this push button the say uh, broth if you are working with broth the broth will be taken up by the pipe it okay so this is always in microliters now you have to learn the calculations of microliters so 1 ml is always always 1000 microliters now micro you can see here a small u and l you can see so that's the uh, symbol or um, that's the unit we write for microliters okay so this is the pipette where you can work with a volume starting from 100 microliter to 1000 microliter now that is adjustable so you have to just uh, move your push button back and forth to adjust the volume that you want okay so you can see what is the setting on this digital display okay now this is the ergonomic grip cover so you can uh, hold it towards your thumb okay and you can work conveniently now about the how to remove the tip so for removing tip there is a tip ejector and tip ejector collar okay so when you push this tip ejector what happens this collar moves down and it pushes the tip of uh, tip from your pipette and this is how a tip is removed okay so you can see this is how a tip fits on the tip cone and these are the tips and this is a autoclavable tip box okay so where you can um, fill in all the micro tips and you can autoclave okay so these tips are autoclavable but not the micro pipette okay then about the petri dishes petri dishes are also known as petri plates and they come in various sizes but commonly used size is 90 mm that is the internal diameter okay internal diameter of your petri plate a petri dish is made up of two parts that is a lid and a base okay now the lid fits closely not tightly on the base okay it fits properly but not that tightly and since both the surfaces are flat a small gap is maintained between the lid and base by a small you can see a small beaded structure okay so what happens you can see there is a very small part that can um, touch the lid of your petri dish and what happens the small gap that is maintained between the lid and the base it um, between the inner surface of the rim of the base is necessary to allow the gas exchange and moisture into and from the plate okay so when you work say you have done streaking on your agar plate this is the agar that you have filled on your base of the petri dish and you have done streaking you have closed your plate now what happens everything that is inside the plate that will be get used up by the bacteria that means the moisture and the oxygen that is available inside the plate that will be used up by the bacteria to grow but after some time the uh, oxygen inside the plate inside the petri plate will get 
exhausted okay no oxygen will be there so what happens the outside air will get inside the plate okay this allows this glass beaded structure it allows the gas exchange and that is how even when you incubate for three to four days even at that time you can see your bacteria growing well okay if your um, lead and base they uh, fit in so tightly then what happens there will be no gas exchange and your culture cannot grow and that's the reason to maintain the gas exchange there is a glass beater structure on the base that allows the lead to fit in properly but not tightly and it allows the gas exchange and moisture into and from the plate okay so that's the reason we use petri dishes now the petri dishes they are available in another size also that is 45 uh, mm diameter okay and some petri dishes they are divided into four section by a raised glass portion okay you can see or you can just uh, google on um, internet and see what are the different sizes and what are the different types of petri dishes available okay now besides glass even plastic petri plates are available okay and they are reusable and some of them are reu reusable and other are use and throw type of okay that depends on the plastic that is used okay so pre sterilizable plastic plates that means the single use plates they are cheaper than that those made of polycarbonate okay so they are very light in weight and very thin okay they are already sterilized and they are packed into a plastic bag or a plastic cover so you just have to open and use it directly but in case of polycarbonate plastic plates petri plates you can wash them and you can sterilize them and autoclave and use it again okay so that's the difference there are two types of plastic petri plates right now such sterilizable plastic plates they should not be kept in oven for drying as the as due to the high uh, which one the pre sterilizable okay they can due to the high temperature they can melt okay that's the uh, point to remember never keep the pre sterilizable plastic plates into the oven okay even the polycarbonate if the temperature is above 121 degrees celsius of your uh, dry heat oven like 160 degree celsius then even they can also melt okay so just be um, cautious when you are working with the plastic plates you can air dry them a day before and then you can use them for autoclaving okay don't go for using a uh, uh, hot air oven and keep them for overnight for drying everything will be destroyed okay due to the high temperature your plastic will melt okay so this was all about the basics that you will be dealing while you start with your practicals in microbiology that is bunsen burner wire loop petri plates and pipettes so i hope everything is clear to you all thank you for watching do like my videos do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you